today we are going to talk quickly about software development practice and I assume best practice because I assure you software developers have plenty of bad practice <laughs> <laughs> but we are not going to learn this one we are focused on the good one um the goal basically of like we we kind of come into like the a new um a new uh, a new part of the book which called maintenance and distribution and the goal of this part will be like kind of like know that we have understood how to build more or less a package or at least to bring every part to it let's try to mm, zoom out and see like how we can be better at doing it i think a lot of uh, I will repeat a lot of uh, knowledge we already learned, so let's see it's positive. But yeah, I guess education is repetition or teaching is repetition. <laughs> so let's go back. So why why we why are we trying to adopt first? Like why 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 does it matter? First, it will make us more productive. It will raise the quality of our work. And I hope, but this is not mentioned by the book, it will maybe make us like our work more, uh, increase a bit more our producibility, which uh, could be important, not necessarily um, uh, for research, but also like for for company, like reproducing your results, even for businesses, I feel it's important. Even if a lot of time, like uh, you are pressed by it. Uh, deadlines short deadlines i will say also like um even if uh, we are i mean no i'm not uh, in academy anymore but um software development bell practices uh and what they advocate allow you and this reproducibility allow you to um quickly iterate they didn't bring that too much in the software development practices but what it's important is like you can quickly iterate and rebuild what you are doing it. And why is it important is because quickly you are kind of, uh, especially like if you practice the long, long scripts, like all my coworkers do that. And you no, know, I spend a lot of most of my time understanding what happens. And sometimes, you know, it's some things that happen in the flow. So they needed this. So they are, uh, I grabbed it and this is kind of sequential, but then they went back on top of that because this wasn't good, et cetera, et cetera. So when you want to debug that or just uh, increase it, uh, it's kind of build a huge cathedral, but it build on very like sandy foundation. So it's, I think like a lot of these software development practices, like divide it, uh, make it like more uh, kind of a workflow that's have player step, or if it's called something like it's way easier to debug small step like small function than uh, a huge sequential script or just to read it to reproduce it even if they do not i mean they mention it in this chapter once but i think it needs to be more maybe more uh, more like say a bit more strongly okay rec the recommendations are pretty obvious um use an idea which has support for air package development uh, that's mostly R Studio or probably VS Code. Or if you want, if you are an Emac user, which Emac does not, I don't know if Emac is. I mean, I'm using Emac, but uh, does it count as an EDE? Um, anyway, basically, uh, use whatever you are confident with it. If it has like support for um, package development, and uh, one one thing which is important maybe is like if you are use using R Studio. You benefit from all of their package because like they create it inside of the studio adding so that's a lot of small functionalities that can uh, add it's 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 really depend on your workflow i will say for my pers personal perspective i do not use only r so sometimes i want another kind of ed that but like as our studio improve on other stuff like you know it's it's i kind of going backward and forward with it but yeah anyway just a tool but it's good like you have a lot of um i don't know what's your take on that but it's really curious like what do you think i get the impression like from moving to like um changing the company name to plot was it posit 
Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Studio. I think like they're they're long because they have integrated stuff like um Python and things into it now. So I think they're going to try mm-hmm. and become more universal. But I agree, like like if you use VS Code, it's really handy if you're doing stuff in Arduino and doing stuff in R because you can just it all works quite nicely together. But yeah. yeah. I- I also like a lot in VS Code. Uh, I have a, a way easier access to terminal. Mm. And a lot of time, I want what I want is one or shell script, and I want like to quickly put it into like the terminal. Anyway, that's yeah. There's yeah. a terminal pane in our studio. Yeah, but like I have to. Yeah, I. Well, I haven't like managed my studio uh, the way I want it. <laughs> oh yeah. I kind of need the shell, then need the Air Studio, then need you know the 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 yeah. Air. If I could split, yeah. like for example, I do not need too much like the environment, not yeah the the file and environment. I I can just call ls, you know, and just see like what's right. inside of where. So I don't know. This is just like personal matter anyway. So I do not think it's matter too much, but yeah. Uh, as long as you find yourself like. Uh, I don't know, comfy and 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 you have like the option. Well, the strongly advocate for using version control. I am uh, understood version control. I think everyone here understand it well. Uh, and they also advocate for continuous integration, continuous deployments, uh, which in our case will be mostly running automatic air command and check. Uh, even if we can probably do more with it. But like for what they provide, at least in this, maybe it will be next chapters on how to understand GitHub Action. Uh, we are mostly like a pre-running already made recipe. A recipe, is it how you call that? Like we yeah. just basically like copy workflow uh, from other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the pro, the pro of it is like uh, do the right thing. And I think this is like, I feel this is like the most important part. Experiment, document, test, check, collaborate the whole workflow and then you can probably like come back to experiment document test check collaborate and i feel like and they make like i think an awesome job at making that very um fluid even if sometimes i feel i i see myself need some shell and then to experiment document test etc etc so that's why i move backward with vs code or studio or emac uh, according to i guess my needs and the project but yeah uh you want to avoid the huge script um mess and uh because you want to quickly run the stuff that's um, not working and test it and uh so i think like this has uh, three tools the id git and github and the integration help you doing that and this is i think something like uh good to improve and then using all of that makes you uh, using the cell tools workflow than the experts. So it's basically like free for you. Git and GitHub. Um, I like at this definition of Git that Git manage the evolution of a set of file. I like the idea that it's a set of file and it's evolve. And the name of this set specific set is a repository. Then they bring some argument about why you should use Git. Git is pretty dominant currently in version control. And uh, it's for GitHub, uh, it's also dominant, but followed by GitLab. I think it's also more like in Europe, we use way more GitLab. So I will be curious to see the distribution um, of it. You have also like another one that's Codeberg, I think which is used now, which is, uh, and then you have Bitbuckets. Um, but yeah, everyone is using GitHub. Uh, so that's bring a lot of resources. Uh, I felt my link here uh, because like GitHub is using by a lot of people. You have like all the workflows that already write it. Uh, you have like a book about it. The documentation of GitHub is also very good. I mean, the documentation of GitLab also. So, but uh, yeah um this is like a huge plus like you are not um well i will say the minus is like this is a microsoft product (laughs) so uh, i i'm fine i mean it's not like i hate microsoft or whatever it's just like i'm afraid at once you know they will ask us 
they will ask like a fee for something. Yeah. Um, yeah, didn't which, they start doing that for like their office suite, like subscription or something? So currently it's not doing, they are not doing it, but uh, they could, you know, uh, I don't know. This is something that's always good to consider. Um, some people also like, well, they harvest your code for whatever they need. So this is our copilot was produced. But um, yeah, uh, I also like it when I was using GitLab, I like it because uh, the instant it was so GitLab can be instanced. Uh, so a lot of people likes, uh, likes for example, um, uh, I was part of digital humanities in France and the digital humanity, like that's for group various labor, um, labor, lab, labs. Uh, and they use, all use the same um, instances of GitLab. So it's allow you also like the, the pros is like it connect new to your, let's say local communities. And the cons is like, uh, you are less visible in the global scale, I will say. But yeah, basically, uh, currently I'm using GitHub uh, one road person. So, except like if I have to recheck some of my codes in other places. So uh, also what's a GitHub, uh, but this is the same with GitLab, it has a communication with your users. Like when you develop a package, you will have users. And so they can submit issues. Uh, also like read the documentation, read the source codes, everything they have like access because what you are putting into Git is this, what we call the source package, what is being built by CRAN if you push it to CRAN. Uh, so user can use the binary uh, or rebuild it according to the operating system. Then uh, it's a local collaboration, like with the pull request, uh, you can ask also features in the issue and basically like it incorporate a lot of tools that's make um yeah like kind of a social network for developers uh distribution well we have seen like uh if you do not submit to cran you have tools like with dev tool install github um and no pack that allow you to install version from um re this remote um uh, this hosted version control repository um no, with pack, you can also install specific uh, commits, which I identify with the secure hash algorithm, which is the one used by um, Git. So Git instead of, uh, uh, for example, SVN. SVN, I think, use a numbering system. And the Git use like, this identifier, like you see like the three letters, three letters and numbers when you commit. It's just the beginning of a bigger um, hash. And that allow you to uh, identify quickly what it is. And we are already seen like uh, it can help you building a website for your package. And remark question on that. I think nothing very like stand out to me. Uh, I, I like, I think like here yeah, they target people that are adopting the needed. But uh, I think uh, everyone here knows that we need it. And uh, we are not maybe the target of these chapters. OK, continuous integration, continuous develop deployment. Yeah, I will say deployment. We do not deal too much with it, except when you are deploying a website. Um, but yeah, it's mostly integration and checking. So for a package, like, let's say we put the source package in GitHub. Um, you can have multiple developers that have permission to push to the main branch, which is the one that will be like used uh, to for the users to download. Uh, but you can also have external users, external like developers that can submit with a pull request that will be incorporated to the main branch. So uh, when you do that, uh, you want like when this uh, multiple developers have the same workflow to check if everything's good. Or if you like receive like a pull request, it seems good, but you, I don't know, you do not have like necessarily like the whole idea of everything. You can like submit it to uh, an automatic process uh, that will uh, check, uh, that will be declared, that will be start um, from certain events. Uh, here it's mostly push and pull request. 
Like for example, when a pull request is submitted, even if you do not accept it, if the in the in the Air for Data Science book club, uh, it will run a check. So it's not necessarily like when it merged to the main branch, it's also like if someone do a pull request, it's do the automatic check, then you, the reviewer, can like uh, spend time like, okay, it doesn't work, make it works, not reading it. And uh, it works, I can like read it and see if I you accept it or not. So, and, uh, but you have also like kind of events that are, you can like schedule them. Like you can use like, for example, a cron time, which is a scheduler said so, like, I want that say like uh, uh, maybe like your package is depending on some data that came regularly or whatever. And then you want like to schedule like every every month a check on the website or every day a check on the website that updates something. This is also possible, but we'll not go into it. Most of what we are doing is like air common check. But you can do more uh, with GitHub action. Uh, they use this package, uh, have a function that's basically copy a GitHub action workflow into a specific GitHub folders, uh, which contain the workflow. Um, the curated list uh, is here. Uh, we should, I should go, because I think it's interesting. So you have like a list of uh, action. Well, the basic one is setup error. So we should check like, uh, where is it? Uh, the action Yelm, I think. And it describe uh, what it does, et cetera, et cetera. And, it's, uh, and it have like, well, without, uh, so this is the Yelm that's, uh, that will be read uh, by it, by the GitHub action. And it will know like, for example, on uh, Windows, you will have something specific to do. Like it's basically install air tools, I think. So this is this is like uh, very nice. Everything is, is well documented. And if you want to learn uh, about GitHub action in R, this is definitely a must read. Even if for myself, uh, I still think the Git, um, like they put a link to it. The GitHub action, uh, where is it? Here get started with the GitHub action. Uh, even the quick start is good to do. Like you understand like what it does very quickly. Um, I will say like, if you already use other tool like Docker, you can also use Docker container. You do not, by default, I think this run on three uh, operating system, which is uh, Mac OS, Ubuntu and Windows. And I think this is their latest, but you can probably ask to run on the containers that you already produced. Um, I also encourage you to read it because uh, it's pretty, it has its own vocabulary. So for example, like, uh, well, this, this is the name, this is how it will run. This is on the action, this is the event. So it will be on the push, but you have other one. Then you have a job and the job can have various step. The step uh, inside of the job, you can like, uh, so you need to run like this job, these steps, this, all the jargon. I don't know if it makes a, so it's have its own vocabulary that you need like, uh, and the vocabulary is directly related to what you put it to the YAML. So the YAML makes sense uh, if you understand what you're doing. And even if you know it works, let's see like uh, learn GitHub. Uh, and yes, like you have also like, um, you have also like uh, expression that you can use. This is, for example, like if uh, I'm on Windows or Linux, you have variable and that's very useful uh, if you want to um, uh, pass some uh, some information. And there's one that I do not remember exactly. That's also like if you want to pass credential, for example, like an, an API access or whatever. So yes, the documentation of GitHub is great and you have good example also inside of the, of the, this uh, airlib action. But uh, let's say like you just want to check what's doing your package <laughs> and you just want an automatic check that do it. Like you have used GitHub action check standard, which uh, will basically test your R command check against the three operating system, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, and what it does, it creates a GitHub uh, repository. It also uh, adds uh, some HTML uh, file in your Git in yours. It's also uh, add this famous workflow and it will copy them from uh, GitHub uh, actions. See, you basically like copy like the Airlib action example check standard into your workflow check standard. And that's created locally, is it? The, um, the document it's created. Forward. It's great locally. And then when you're going to push it, push it's going to go into your hosted services. Mm. But you can also create it like in the hosted services directly. Uh, it's kind of loose. Like you need you need to, I mean, it's good to have it on boss, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, it had a nice badge on top of your readme. <laughs> if, you're really, if you're in, which is still good, you know. Yeah. More more <laughs> images, more it's look more professional. Anyway. And uh, yes, so as I said, like if you want to use like uh use package done GitHub pages, this will create a specific branch into your package called GitHub pages that will be deployed for your package done website. Uh, and you have like also like, oh, should I, it was not correct spelling, but like you can also use this GitHub action test coverage, which will then uh, pull, uh, let's see. Test coverage, uh, list of action. I do not know where it is. But yeah, I, it will run your test for you. Well, so that's it. One of the other things with um, having a like users do push requests and stuff, I've seen in a few um, packages that host on GitHub. Um, when someone wants to make a a change or suggestion, a pull request kind of thing. You can have it specify that the any changes they make will be under a certain copyright license, which yeah. is quite neat because uh, I've yeah you know, reading through some of them where people try to change copyright licenses has been like a huge nightmare, and then they've changed to this once they've got everyone <laughs> all the past. Um... Yeah, I think it's on the um, GitHub side. Like I do not think it's related to GitHub action. I think it's more related. To yeah, the sorry. Inter interface, but yeah, yeah maybe. I mean, yeah, basically, like it automates a bunch of stuff. Um, but I do not know if it's, I mean, yeah, this is, I guess, this is software development practices. Um, but like, I think, like, when you do the book club, you already kind of have this level. So, yeah. Yeah, like the chapter doesn't really tell you much. <laughs> Yeah, so I do not know what what kind of feedback you can we can provide for them like to do it. Um, I think an example where you where you um, where at least you set up one of your own instead of build, of copying pasting a workflow will be a good. Uh, but maybe it's come later, like in the um, continuous integration chapter. So I think they've uh, got rid of that continuous integration chapter now. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Life cycle. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it's directly life cycle. So, yes, I, I don't know. I think, yes, a small example on how to run a script is our, like, just, you know, generate random numbers and, and produce a PDF that's with it, like a graph that stores in some, some places will be already a good, uh, even if it's not met, but yeah, it's not package related. So, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what could be like a uh, plenty of spelling? I think what makes a good like commit message and things like that. Because oh yeah, <laughs> I just remember like when yeah. I got taught it was like do it often and then have very short but like good like it makes it clear what the commit was. But then I've read things on GitHub where people have asked to like keep get uh, sorry get keep commit messages to a minimum kind of thing and. Just have I think like yeah. Okay. Uh yeah. 
So yeah, that's it. Uh, well, I have nothing to more to add to it, but yeah, I, I think this chapter could be a beefy, beefy a bit more. Mm. Uh, maybe also more yeah. like in software development practices. Uh, uh, I don't, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, it seems right now. Yeah, it either needs to be beefier, or maybe they just don't even mention it. <laughs> just like read about it here. I don't know. Well, the good point is we can go to bed shorter. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone signed up next week. I mean, I feel we like I rubbed you, postpone. so I guess I can I can go. <laughs> um, I just I purposefully skipped a week. I have to write a midterm and give a midterm next week. <laughs> no, but I, I can I can do next week. Like you can add me. Okay. Anyway, there's just three of us now. Yeah, Ooh. I don't know what cool. happened, everybody. Okay. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Well, so, <laughs> sign me sign me up because like this chapter was very I mean, okay. I know when I, know. I started reading the chapter, I was like, we should have looked at it. We probably could have yeah. combined yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh crap, I haven't read the chapter, and that was like I don't know, 1 p.m. here. And then it's like, oh no. And I had a look and I was like, oh, I can read this in like yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... yeah, yeah it's... Okay. Well, I have to go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, see you later. Even though it was short. <laughs> see you later. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.